We're joined now by James Madison University. Once again, uh, Ben DiNucci, quarterback, Riley Stapleton, wide receiver, and defensive player, Rondell Carter. We'll start with an opening comment from head coach, Kurt Signetti. Okay, well, obviously didn't get the result we wanted today. I give North Dakota State a lot of credit. Uh, it's a great football team, uh, you know, the reason they've won so many. Uh, they played better than we did, uh, deserved the win. The quarterback's a tremendous player. Uh, but, you know, a lot of our issues in the first half were self-inflicted. Uh, we didn't play particularly well on defense. Uh, a lot of missed assignments, missed tackles, penalties, uh, you know, uh, field goal, fake field goal for a touchdown, missed field goal. Second half, you know, you let the guy third and 22 run 50 yards for a touchdown. That's tough. But uh, to our guy's credit, uh, I thought we played uh, well, really well in the second half. Uh, I thought we really settled down, uh, you know, as a team, particularly on defense. Had a big fourth down stop on defense that gave us a chance to tie the game and send it to overtime. Uh, and, uh, you know, we got down there and had a chance to do that and, and didn't do it. Uh, very proud of our uh, seniors and uh, disappointed that we couldn't send them away on a happier note. It was a tremendous group of guys. And I uh, really uh, miss, uh, you know, them being around. Uh, you know, I do want to congratulate our team on their effort throughout the season, their commitment, their investment in the season. And, uh, you know, I told them, uh, you know, you, you can't lose sight of all the things you did accomplish uh, throughout this season and uh, your investment uh, during the season. And, uh, you know, I also would like to thank our coaching staff for their effort uh, this season throughout the season. And uh, this is the last time this team will be together uh, as we know it. Uh, and that's, and I hate the f that we have to walk out uh, like we are. But that is life. You don't always get what you want. And uh, so but I give North Coast State a lot of credit. Thank you, Coach. Uh, we'll open it up now for questions. Reminder, we'll have questions for the student athletes first. Please uh, raise your hand, identify yourself and your affiliation, and then who your question is directed to. We'll start here right in the front row. Greg Medea, Daily News Record, uh, Rondell, Ben, Riley, for, for you guys, all three. What was said at halftime after uh, North Dakota State had just pulled off that fake field goal uh, for you guys to kind of settle in and, and get back in the game? Um, Let's start with Rondell and come down the line. Uh, just play JMU football. You know, the first half, we didn't play JMU football at all. Um, costly penalties. Um, you know, we let them run the ball on us a little bit. We're not used to doing that. And, um, you know, the message was just play JMU football because we weren't, you know, then we came out in the second half and we finally did it, but you know, we ran out of time, so. Ben, we'll go next to you. Just had to be us. Yeah, I mean, they pretty much said it. Next question. Noah Ziegler with the breeze. Rondell, what was it like trying to stop Trey Lance? Obviously, he had an explosive first half, but what was it like trying to stop him, and what was the adjustments at halftime to further stop him in the second half? Yeah, well, I mean, for, like I said, for him to be that young, uh, I said it before, you know, he's very dynamic. For him to be that young and to be that calm in the pocket is pretty crazy. So, you know, he got three years left for eligibility, and so, he, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty impressive. But um, yeah, it's hard to tackle sometimes. You know, he can be. But, you know, we had some opportunities to get him down, but we just didn't. You know, it was a... A QB draw he had. There was a time Doc, um, a deep got back there to sack him, but he scrambled out of the pocket and he got there. So, you know, it was pretty tough trying to tackle him, but, you know, we should have been better tackling. Yeah. Next question here in the front row. Uh, Wayne, that's with the Richmond Sounds Dispatcher. Rondell, uh, what did you see on that um, kind of fake reverse they had there um, with Phoenix Pros running uh, you know, along the sideline for the touchdown? What did you see on, on that particular play? Um, I mean, we just had to be more disciplined with our eyes. Um, then we 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 weren't. Uh, he reversed the ball. Then it was a fake reverse. You know, we kind of anticipated him to probably come backside, but you know, he kept the ball going, and then it's left op outside open. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. Here in the front. Uh, TJ Eck with WHSV. Ben, this is for you and Riley. You can answer as well. Just talk about the team coming back in the second half. Obviously, you guys started fast and maybe didn't execute offensively how you wanted through the middle of the game, but towards the end of the game kind of get, really got back into it. What were you guys saying to each other? What was the, the mentality like on the sideline to get back into this game? Let's go Ben first on that, please. 
just have to play our ball was really the same thing that was said at halftime. And um, you know, we felt that they hadn't really stopped us much in that first half and really the second half too, honestly. But um, we just felt like if we, we did what we were capable of doing and not not lose our, our cool, we, we'd have a pretty good shot at that thing. And as you can see, it went down to the last play, just kind of ran out of time there. Yeah, just uh, we had to quit um, shooting ourselves in the foot and making mistakes, and we knew that we were going to have a chance in the second half because it was a two-score uh, two game at halftime. But, um, you know, again, we just didn't quite get it done in the second half. Back here in the front row again. Ben, this is for you. Uh, just what was working with you and Riley today uh, down the field as you guys were, were picking up first downs play after play? He's a beast. I don't really have anything else to say. He's my roommate, my brother. I love the dude. Um, been a heck of a two years playing with him. It's unfortunate that kind of had to send the seniors out like this being our last game, but wouldn't really trade anything any of these, these past two years for the world. But uh, anytime I, I see a guy pressed on Riley, I'm just start licking my lips. So that's basically what I did today. Riley, just for you, the same thing. And what was working with you and Ben today? I was just fortunate enough to have my number called a few times. Uh, ben put the ball where I could get it. Uh, there was a few plays that I wish I could have back that I didn't make today. Those are the ones that are eating me right now. But uh, Ben's a heck of a quarterback, and, and coaching staff did a great job calling out play calls today, and we just didn't execute enough. But Ben's a heck of a quarterback, and it was an honor to play with him. Other questions? Here, front row, right side. Ross, I go on 24-7 Sports. Ben, can you kind of – Walk us through that last play for you guys on offense, what you saw, what, you know, obviously ended up being that last mistake. Yeah, sure. Um, roll out to the left. Uh, Brandon Polk's the first option. Looked open. I didn't see number six. Made a heck of a play. Other questions? Uh, for each, each of the players, just um, kind of your early uh, thoughts. So just how would you kind of just sum up your career? You guys have you know, been the winningest class, senior class in uh, January history. So um, just you know, early reflection, just how would you reflect on you know, the past four or five years for each of you guys? Let's go Riley first on that one. Uh, stuff to put in like one or two sentences. It's been an amazing experience. I uh, wouldn't change it for the world. JMU holds a special place in my heart. And uh, you know, it's tough to look back right now just because this hurts so much. But again, wouldn't trade it for the world. And I'm so blessed to be here. Rondell, or go with Ben first, then Rondell. I, I, I haven't been here for four years, but I, I've had the pleasure of being here the last two. Um, and it sure feels like I've been here for four or five. These guys have been nothing but uh, brothers to me in that locker room, so embracing from the time I got here. And um, you know, this, is, this is the reason I came here, to try and play in a game like this. And uh, there's got to be a winner every game, and there's got to be a loser every game. And we just you know, happened to come up on the short end of the stick today. Um, yeah, I transferred in here three years ago, um, and it was for this reason to compete for a national championship. Um, I kind of wish I would have came here as a true freshman. You know what I mean? I wish I wouldn't even have went anywhere else because this place is just so special, man. Um, those guys in that locker room, I wouldn't trade them for the world. You know what I mean? Win, lose, or draw, I want those guys to the end. You know what I mean? Half of those guys, almost all those guys, will probably be in my wedding. You know what I mean, that's how close we are. We're a tight knit group. That's just, you know, that's just the truth. So. Um, Jam you, thank you, my coaches, thank you, my teammates, thank you. I appreciate everything y'all have done for me. Y'all made me a better player, a better person, and a better man, and a better leader. And I appreciate y'all. We'll go next in the back. Okay. Back here to the front. Uh, TJ with WHSV again. I guess it's for all the players. Um, today, really, two of the best teams in the FCS met up on the field. Can you kind of just talk about what this game was like to play in it, and, and really the, the matchup between the two, top two teams and, and kind of feel like you guys proved that these were the two top teams in the country. I guess we can start with you, Rondo. Yeah, this is what you play for. You know, you play for this moment. You know, you got the number one team and the number two team. You know, um, obviously they come out in the winning end, but, you know, I think they'll probably tell you that we were their toughest opponent. You know, um, you know, we were just we were resilient. You know, and we showed that all year. And um, it's, this, was, this was a fun game. You live for this kind of game right here. You know, as a football player, as a competitor, you live for the number one and number two team. You know what I mean? That's something you live for. And, you know, it was a, it was a good game to the end of it, so. Ben, ben. Um, uh, honestly, they, I don't really think they won that game. Honestly, I think we lost it. Um, too, many, too many penalties. I'm not going to comment on the refs. It's not my job to do that. But um, trick plays, you know, they, they'll probably tell you. We, I mean, we out physical them. I don't even want to talk about it. But they're a heck of a team, and we've got a heck of a team. So um, it was a fun game. Riley. 
Yeah, <clears throat> like uh, Rondell said, it, as a competitor and an athlete, this is everything you want and hope for is to play against the best and the biggest stage. And uh, to be able to do that is an experience that I'll never forget. And again, I'm just thankful and blessed to have that opportunity. Just wish it would have turned out differently. Anything else for the student athletes? We'll take one more here in the front. Uh, j just for the three of you, do you feel like you're leaving the program in a, in a better place than when you when you came in? If you look at the, the players who stepped up today, the young guys that have followed behind you, Percy, uh, Latrell Palmer, Gage stepping in at quarterback a little bit today, do you feel like you've left it in a good place? Yeah, Start with uh, Rondell. Yeah, we definitely left it in a good place. You know what I mean? It was nothing to necessarily, you know, when you say leave it in a better place, this place was good when I came in. You know what I mean? I had to basically assimilate to everything that was going on here, you know, not the other way around. So, but it's been, like I said, I've been fortunate enough to see great leaders before I got here, the Brian Shores, Andrew Anchorage, Simeon Robbins and stuff like that, and learn from those guys. And now us three, all of us were able to learn from them. Now he was able to basically preach all that stuff to the young guys and hopefully they will just carry on the legacy, you know what I mean? And hopefully they'll get this done in the next few years, if not next year. Ben yeah. and Ben Riley. Sure, hope I left left a legacy there or an impact on the team. There's been a lot of great quarterbacks before me, and I'm I'm not any anywhere close to those guys. But um, just to be able to to be a part of this thing and um, I get to get to play in a game like this and have this type of experience. I had so many friends, family, people from my hometown here. So just to be able to have them see me play, I've been so fortunate. My parents have been able to make every single game this year. Family's been able to make every single game. Um, so. Being able to kind of pass that torch down and let these underclassmen know that, hey, there's a lot that goes into this. Don't take it for granted. Uh, it's one of those lifetime uh, experiences that you're not going to really be able to, um, you know, get back when it's over. But uh, sure hope that, you know, senior class uh, left an impact on the program. Yeah, as a young guy, that, that's one thing, um, you know, I, I always strive to be as, as a good leader and someone on the team that um, leaves it better than than uh, when I, when I first got here, and and kind of like what Rondell said when um, you know there was older guys too when we were younger that that did a great job and 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 set the foundation, and uh, we try to do our absolute best to to leave that legacy and and uh, you know help the younger guys have uh, more success than we did. Okay, thank you to the student athletes. We'll dismiss them now. Congratulations on your season. Appreciate it. We'll open it up now for questions for <coughs> Coach Signetti. Start here in the front row. Uh, Co Coach, yeah, on the fake field goal, just on your perspective, uh, just what, what happened on that play? We just had guys not do their job on the offensive left side or right. And, you know, um, we have a morning coaches meeting, you know, before every game. Today was at 6.30, and we talked about the fake field goal. Uh, you know, <coughs> you're worried about the uh, – muddle huddle so much and they had faked one uh we we were in the protection we were a block that was very sound not high risk and uh they executed and we did big play other questions we'll go here in the front the, the fourth the fourth quarter comeback what kind of enabled it to happen after lance had his long run on the, on the third and 23 or whatever it was. It could have been a backbreaker, but you guys kind of rallied from that after that. Yeah, and we did. And uh, talked about being resilient like a rubber ball in this game that, you know, uh, that we would have to respond to adversity. And uh, at that point, we were down two scores, but plenty of time really to get back in the game. And uh, so I thought we there were moments in that game we showed our true character and stepped up and uh, gave ourselves a chance, and we were patient, got the run game going, made some plays. Uh, in the past game, defense had a big stop on fourth and two. So uh, I think you saw flashes of JMU football, but unfortunately, <laughs> uh, you know, there were too many big negative plays uh, that proved to be too much to overcome. Second row here on the aisle. Remember to please identify your name and affiliation as well. Coach Brad, uh, Super Talk 1270. How different was game planning for North Dakota State compared to teams you've played in the past with such a mobile quarterback? Well, I think their offense is very difficult because of all the different personnel groupings, and we were having problems getting the, what personnel they were in uh, because they're running the same position guys on and off the field. And then the multiplicity in their formations uh, and their offensive design. Then when you put a guy like Trey Lance in there, a quarterback who is just 
he's just a cut above. Uh, you know, and I mean, he ran for 181 yards. Uh, we sacked him once, so he had 15 loss yards. Uh, and the guy can run it, throw it. He's big. You saw him run through tackles. You saw him run through ta tackles from linebackers in the first half. Uh, you know, and so uh, they're a handful. We'll go here in the second row on the right. Uh, Jeff Kopak with the Foreman Faro. Coach, can you have the details of that last play? Was that something you, the exact play you ran before, or did you change it up a little bit? No, that was a different play. It may have looked the same. We had a couple uh, passes inside the five. Uh, that we've repped quite a bit going into this game. Uh, the one, uh, well, Riley caught two touchdowns, uh, you know, uh, two different plays. Uh, and uh, we, we showed the sprint out. Uh, I can't remember what it was out in the field we did that. But the very last play, that was one of our two two-point plays. We had two two-point plays we practiced quite a bit. That was one of them. We had time for two plays. We had eight seconds. So you had time for that play, and if it wasn't open, where you could throw it away and then run a final play of the game. Other questions? Uh, front row on the right. Coach Noah Ziegler with the Breeze. You had Gage Maloney go in for a few plays uh, to run what I assume was a trick play. Uh, what kind of allowed you to have confidence to pull that off or call that play? We practiced the past three weeks sort of a, lack of a better term, wildcat package uh, with two quarterbacks on the field. Uh, we had more runs uh, out of that package. Uh, you know, we could run a power, a counter. Uh, sometimes Ben would be a quarterback. Sometimes Gage would be a quarterback. Uh, you know, it threw him off balance a little bit, and we started running the ball. We did to get some runs. Palmer had some nice runs. The trick play obviously didn't work. Uh, you know, we'll put that one away for a long time. Um, last two times that one hadn't worked. So, uh, but we overcame it. And uh, so, but Ga Gage is a gamer, and uh, he went in there and did a nice job, and you know, just like Cole, but we went with Gage because you know he's a little bit more of a runner, downhill runner, 225 pounds. We'll go also right here in the front. Katie Harper from the Breeze, and you kind of touched on Latrell Palmer already, but can you talk about the impact he's had, especially at the national championship game as a true freshman? Well, I thought he really went in there and gave us something in the second half, uh, 44 yards on eight carries, and. Maybe, uh, you know, he uh, was breaking tackles, running hard. And uh, so, um, you know, he's got a lot of talent and keeping him on the field and injury free has been the biggest challenge for us at this point. But, he, he, you know, he's got a really bright future. TJ with WHSV in Harrisonburg. Coach, I, I know it's obviously the loss just happened, but as you look forward, how do you feel about the, the shape of your program and your team moving forward? Obviously, there's a lot of great seniors, but yeah. how do you feel about the roster you have coming back and the way this program is moving forward after? putting the season together you guys well, we have a really strong junior class here too and uh you know so and you know in recruiting we have a strong brand we're able to attract quality student athletes and you know if there's immediate needs uh you know we have pretty good success with transfers so you know we'll have a good team coming back it is a little early uh especially coming off of this loss uh but you know you always start at uh you always start at ground zero with every team and uh, we'll give these guys a few weeks off. It's been a long season, 16 games. Uh, let them get away from a little bit and then get back at it and finish up recruiting. And, uh, but, you know, I sure miss a lot of the, seeing these seniors around. They did a great job. I just feel so bad for them. Other questions? Uh, front row, far right. Steve Hallstrom, WZFG Radio. Coach, these two teams don't play each other all that often, but when you do, <laughs> it's on some really big stages. And a lot of people have talked about these two teams have uncommon depth, uncommon talent. There seems to be some mirror images in each other. Is this a budding rivalry, or how would you describe uh, what goes on when you and NDSU get together? Uh, they've been titanic, monumental type games. You know, with JMU going out there and beating them. I think it's their, you know, last loss, an only playoff loss. Uh, maybe what was that? Sixteen. 17 national championship and now here we are 19 national championship and they obviously have great tradition uh, have kept it going a long time and have tremendous resources and you know we feel like we've we're in the same position and uh, you know we've got tremendous support from our administration great fan support great I mean top fans in the country really nice facilities we're in a good recruiting location there's a great culture our guys love to compete and expect to win so uh, you, you saw two best teams in the country square off today, and today they were the better team. 
Got time for a couple more. We'll take one here in the front. Uh, something you touched on, just how crucial was the senior class to uh, helping everything uh, to come together the way it did for in year one for you this year? Well, um, you know, strong seniors, and obviously you're not going to get much done without great senior leadership. But uh, I think these guys were hungry as a team coming off of last season. And, uh, you know, I've been doing this a while. They understood why we did what we did in kind of all facets of the program. And, uh, you know, we just really had a great culture and a great karma. And, uh, you know, these guys really never had a bad day, to be honest with you. They didn't. They practiced hard every single day. They played well. And, you know, really stayed focused on what they had to stay focused on. Any other questions for Coach? Thank you, Coach. Congratulations you. on your season. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat>